Yilu, this is Delusionally. I hope you guys are doing swell today. I tend to alternate between saying Delusional and saying Lobo at the intro, but it's whatever. For today's topic on knowledge checking, punishes, and all that stuff, is with Harang. Now, Harang has a varied moveset with a lot of frame checking, a lot of frame trapping, and so on. So it's very difficult to really pinpoint exactly the moves that you want to be tackling on to face against Harang and learning how to properly punish it. But I think that I found several moves in his kit that you will have to be very careful of and how to properly punish them accordingly when the Horang decides to go and use these moves. Alongside going a little bit more in deep into the overall gameplay of Horang and showcasing what means you can apply to try to beat whenever he attempts to go for these kinds of tools against you. So let's start. So the first move in question that I feel that a lot of Horangs love to use they tend to use this at a certain distance because it has really good range, and that is the back three. Now, back three has decent distance. If you were to place, let's say, Lydia, or the character specifically, at a certain range, Haran can still hit you and launch you from this move. But if you were to block the move accordingly, the move is minus 19. So if the Horang decides to use this and you block it, don't feel afraid to then engage the Horang with your launch punish move. So I tend to see a lot of players that like to do like let's say their 1-2s against the Horang whenever he does this when you block the move. Or they'll just do nothing and just space out and just backstepping away. So just to showcase that you can punish it, I'm going to do one punish with Lydia specifically, or two punishes that you can do with Lydia. But with any character that you're playing with, use your launching mid or high move that your character may have with that particular moveset. Now, another way that you can beat the back three is by sidestepping or side walking to his right side. You can kind of do it to the left side as well, but it can try clipping you, so there's a big chance that if you're not quick enough or if you're not sidewalking enough, that you could get clipped by back three. So, in any ways, you can still properly punish it on both sides, but I recommend going for the right side. Now, I also understand that not many players at the, let's say, bottom red ranks or even bottom the ruler ranks don't really know how to properly use side steps. So I would just recommend to just block the incoming back three and then punish it with your launching punish. The next move in question will be his down forward two. Now his down forward two is a launch, just like let's say Yoshimitsu's down forward two. And it's safe on block at minus seven, just like Yoshimitsu's down forward two. To punish this move, I recommend to just take the, the attack, block it, and immediately go with your low attacks against the Harang. Either low attack that you can use with your character, but try to use the faster version of whatever low you may have with your character against the Harang. The reason why I would uh, state to go with a low is that a lot of players, they tend to go with, let's say for example, the Harang or any character that has like a down forward 2 launch that's safe on block, like Yoshimitsu's. They'll go for like the 1-2 option. But because it's minus 7, they can just block the incoming attack that's coming right afterwards. And they tend to always make the guess that they'll, they'll be using some kind of like high attack. They barely will use any mids against the opponent. Which is another thing that I also recommend. Use one of your mids as well. Even if you do end up losing your turn. But if you're smart with it, you can bait the Horang to then either block the incoming hit or to basically get hit by the move. Reason why is that if they do go for the down forward 2... And let's say they do manage to hit you with it, but you blocked it. They're going to look for the 1-2 or any kind of high punish or high jab that you'll use right afterwards. And they'll try ducking you. If that happens, then even a low will stop them. Or won't stop them, I mean. If they attempt to do that. So try to go for one of your mids. Like in this case, if it was Lydia, it's your down forward 1 to check them. And in some cases, if you have a safe option, uh, safe mid option, you can use that as well. You can also attempt to beat the down forward 2 by stepping to your right side. 
Or sidewalking if you prefer. I prefer the sidewalk instead. But you can't step it. Now the next move in question, this move is quite infamous in Harang's kit because it's a low into a high. This move is kind of better than Lee's back 3-3. Three, three. So specifically, his move guarantees a follow-up if it hits you. So if I were to block, I can't. It's a guarantee string. And this puts him at right stance or right flamingo stance at the beginning. And if idled, it will go right into his right stance. Now the best means to beat this is you will have to make the guess if he's going to go for down 3-4. And if he does, block the move. And then punish it accordingly. Now if you're quick enough, you can also punish this with one of your launchers. Since he is forced to go into right flamingo stance and or either into right stance if he goes idled, you can launch the harangue in time before he does anything else. But still be careful though because they do have options you can use in that stance and right flamingo stance to go for a power crush. The next move is another low particular strain that the harangue can use against you. It's a scrub killer because harangues that use this love to use it at lower ranks. At the higher ranks you don't really see it often, but it's one of the most favorite moves that I can see from my experience from newer players that pick up harangue and that is the down 4-4. Now the down 4-4 isn't guaranteed on the last hit, you can block it, but it is annoying when you do get caught with the first hit. And it does have a little bit of tracking so if you do attempt to sidestep it you could get caught by the move. You see, I attempted to sidestep it and then sidewalk it if possible, and I still got clipped by the move. Harangues love using this move at round start, so if you do see harangues that do this, your best means on round start is to just simply block it, but if they use it at the center stage, let's say once the round starts, and then at the middle of the intense fights that you are going to be going with with the harangue, try to anticipate the lows that they may use against you. So if you do block the incoming low, the last hit is a high, so you can just stay ducking and then punish accordingly. But if let's say you were to get hit by the move, but the second move you did block, the move is minus 13 on the last hit. So this means you can go with your 13 frame punish, or if you don't know what your 13 frame punish is, just go with your 10 frame jab and use that in instead if you want to. In Lydia's case, she can go into her uh, forward 2, into 4, I believe, this move, which is 12 frames. Now, it's not impossible to actually step this move, or in this case, I would say sidewalk it. You have to beat it by stepping to the left side, or sidewalking to the left side, in order to get away from the move. But there's a big chance that you may still get hit by the incoming attack because of the tracking. As you can see, it's best to sidewalk it. If you step it, that last hit can still guarantee a hit off of you if you don't immediately step into a block. The next move in question is Harangue's up forward 3-4. Now, it does have a final hit with the 3, which is a heel kick, a downwards heel kick. It's negative on block. So Harangues don't really use this. Even the newer players won't even dare to use the final hit because they know they can get punished. But they love throwing out at least the second hit off because that is actually plus on block. As you can see, the harangue is plus two, so it's not your turn if this were to happen. Not only that, it forces the harangue to go into right flamingo stance, or if he decides to go idle, he'll go into his right stance. If this were to happen, he can frame trap you. The best means to beat it is either to sidewalk it to either side, so that way you don't get caught by the initial attack. But I do recommend, if by chance you do end up getting the attack and you blocked it, that there is a way to option select the harangue if it decides to go into the up 4 3 4 that will place him into the right flamingo stance, or again, if he decides to stay idle, he will just go right into his right stance. Which, if he does go to either one and decides to attack you, the options that he will tend to use will tend to be mostly high moves. Meaning that you have a lot of ample time, even if he's plus two, that you can still counterattack the harangue right afterwards. The best option that I recommend to fight against a harangue when he decides to do this is a dick jab. 
As you can see, it's 10 frames on startup the dick jab. And if he decides to go for any move in particular, you can still beat him. Even if he goes for a power crush, you can still beat the harangue. The only option that the harangue has to offer to beat your option select is to go for his hop kick. So as an example, let's say if I control harangue and I go for the move, yeah. I can go for this. If this happens, you will get launched. So you'll have to make a proper guess, is he going to go for his highs, for his mids, which are slow, unless he decides to go for moves that let's say, if he decides to go for right flamingo stance, he has the option to go for forward four, this move, which is a high. So you can duck it and option select that move in particular. It's actually quite quick too. The move is eight frames on the first attack. The second one is 10 frames. It's kind of like Yoshimitsu's flash in a way, but it's not. It's not as fast and accordingly, but if, let's say, the opponent decides to attack him, he can then use this move, let's say, for example, he can launch the opponent. So the harangue is quite similar to Yoshimitsu in that case, but I wouldn't really put them together, as more, more than not, players don't really associate harangue with Yoshimitsu, but I'm just, you know, giving you an example. He has other moves too that he can use while he's in the stance. He can go for the two, which is again, a high. Or he goes for the mid, which is 14 frames on startup. He can go for the three, which is another high. Or he can go for the forward three in his right flamingo stance, which is again, still quite slow. So even if he is plus two, you can still just go around and just dick jab the harangue to beat him if he decides to go for any of these moves. But the likelihood that he might go for this move into the hop kick is still a big chance. So it's up to you if you want to decide to go for the option select to then beat all of his mids and highs while he's standing in his rifle flamingo stance and dick jab him. If he decides to go for the launch, then you will have to then properly guess. If he does go for it, it's, it's negative on block, so you can punish him accordingly. To showcase it, it's minus 13. You can't launch him if he does this, but you can try going for your 12 frame or 13 frame punish against the harangue. The next move in question is harangue's up forward 444. The last hit is plus 7 if it connects. And it's a low, so you have to block as a low. And it's plus 1 on block for harangue as well. Not only that, it does place him into right flamingo stance for a quick second. And then it goes into the right stance, which again, this is where he's most dangerous in while he's in the right stance. And I'm not just trying to say right stance as in the correct stance, I mean that's what it's actually called. It's called right stance. Essentially, when he does this, this is right stance. So same thing, if he decides to go for this particular move, I would question it and simply just go for a thick jab for whatever move he might go right afterwards. But that's if you're close enough though, because then if not, then he might launch you accordingly. And the worst about this move is that you can't low parry it because it jails you if you block all the incoming hits. But if you only step it, he can clip you with the initial second and third hit. So I would advise to just simply sidewalk the move to the left side so that you don't get hit by the initial move. If you try to right step instead, the third hit can still clip you, so try to be quick as to what you're going to be doing next. So if, let's say you want to punish him accordingly. That's an example. But I just recommend to just simply sidewalk it to either side. Left is preferable if you want to go for the left side, or the right side doesn't really matter, and punish accordingly to the harangue. I will also advise that there's a chance that the harangue might not go for the last hit. Even if it does jail and you can't low parry it, you can still block it. So he might go for only two hits instead of going for the final hit instead. It's minus zero on block. So that means that you're both in the neutral. You can both decide to attack each other at, you know, whatever you want to. But since he has the 4-4 in his right flamingo stance, he can just pressure you with that. So be careful. And if that were to happen, I would advise to just simply go for the dick jab. The next move in question now is his 4-4-3. His 4-4-3 is plus six on block. So essentially he can frame trap you with this move. Not only that, it also allows him access of right stance. So he can continue frame trapping you while he's in that stance to then bombard you with strings that you will then have to guess right afterwards. 
But I do recommend that if he does go for this move and decides to go for any of his moves in his right stance, same to the right flamingo stance, you can option select a lot of his moves in that stance by simply going into the dick jab. But since he's plus 6, you still kind of have to respect the harangue and not go for the dick jab unless you know for certain that he'll go for a high. As an example, Harang has a few moves in right stance that he can use. He has the 2, which is a high, or 2-1, same thing, 2 highs. You can go for the 4, which is another high, and you can go into. You can go into 2-4, same thing, both highs. Then you can go into the right flamingo stance by pressing forward into 4. You can go into forward 3, which is another high. Now it puts him out of the right stance. But it's plus 12 on block. Plus 12 on block. Then he has his back four. This is a high crush move, so he can go under highs. And he has back three. If he hits you with this and on counter hit, this is a launch against you. And he can go for the infamous down four four if he wants to. The move that you have to be wary of when he's in this stance is his three. This puts him in a mid attack, which then puts him right back into his default state. And he can follow up into the final hit of the string, which is a high. You can duck it even on block, but if you were to block it, he is still able to take the turn. He hits plus 10 when he does this. Plus 10, and it puts him right into right flamingo stance for the initial frame trap. So, my recommendations is that if he does go for any of the moves while he's in the right stance from the move that I just mentioned, in this case the 443, Attempt to dick jab him. There's a lot of dick jabbing in this case because that's really the only option you have to fight against Harang unless you make the right proper read to sidestep some of the moves. Which, again, not many of you know how to do just yet. It's still something that's considered to be an advanced technique. So I would just recommend just to dick jab him. A lot of Harangs at the lower ranks don't know how to properly mix you up. They'll just throw lows or highs against you to catch you off guard. So I advise go for a dick jab. But not while he's doing his 443. It's only when he's doing certain moves that go into moves like this that you can then attempt to go for a dick jab. But if you go for this, the harangue player does, I mean, he can still kind of catch you off guard since it has a lot of push block. As you see. So you want to be able to then make the read of what move he'll be using next, which a lot of the times he'll be going for a type of high or a mid move against you. So if that were to happen, make the read. If your character has a special low they can use, let's say it's an example. In Lydia's case, she has the full crush on 4-3. You can try using that, but it is pretty slow. So if they do attempt to go for a high against you, you can catch them off guard. Or your next best bet is to go for a power crush. But again, they're plus six, so be careful exactly as to what they'll be doing next. They can still hit you out of power crush, because power crushes, when they're armored, are only engaged or enabled at the ninth frame. So you gotta be careful when you're attacking the harangue with the power crush. If you have some kind of low crush or high crush move, in this case a high crush move, use Lydia's down two. But if your character has a high crush type of move, like say Yoshimits down back 1-2, you can use that against the harangue. If they decide to go for a high, again, make the proper read. However, if you have the, you know, the skill to sidestep, you can do this against the harangue 443 by sidestepping it to the right side. Or the left if you want to do it from the left side. It is better to sidestep it to the left though, you have more room to then distinguish exactly how to get away from the 443. But if you're not too sure, just simply sidewalking instead if you don't want to be framed perfect with your sidesteps. Now the last move in question, well, will be kind of the last move, is Harang's 444. This move is minus 7, so he does lose his turn, and it also forces him into the right stance. So if he does go into 444 and you block it, don't go for any attack that may try to attack him with, let's say, like a 10 frame move, because there's a big chance that he might escape it. Reason why... You see how the harangue goes back? If the player wants to, he can go back into his regular stance, which would pivot around, or behind him, I should say, like he would try to do like a simple back step, pivot back, and then simply escape the initial move he might use right afterwards. So he's quite safe when he's using this move. But if you're quick, you can actually still catch him off guard with one of your lows. 
Now, the recommended way to beat this is by simply sidestepping it. Again, not many of you will know how to sidestep, but if you try to practice hard enough, then you can then escape it by simply stepping it to the right side or left side. Now, I mentioned that that was going to be the last move, but there is one extra move that I really do think that players need to learn from Harang if they don't want to get caught by his moves. For example, if I'm at this distance, and the Harang decides to go for his right stance, he has a follow-up neutral move that he can use that can catch you from a pretty far distance that places him at a plus one on block state. It's also a homing move, so you can't step this move. And yeah, this is the move. So if a Harang decides to go into the right stance, be careful if he decides to go for the down forward three motion of the attack. Because this is the move that they are likely going to be using to get close to you. Even at this distance, the Harang can still catch you. And the only way you can stop him is by interrupting him. It is slow, the initial move that they will be using. But if you're quick enough to distinguish the move that's coming out, go for your jab. But the thing is, not many players would do that, so... I would advise to go for practice mode and then try to then distinguish the moves animations so that way you'll build up the muscle memory and the reactions to then beat the move by simply jabbing it. A lot of harangues like to do this. If they do this, they're just cheesing you, they're just trying to check and see whether or not if you know how to beat the move. So again, if this happens, jab him out of the stance, or in this case jab him out of the move. So that way you don't get caught by the initial hit. Or if you block it, it still will be their turn. However, if they do go for the move, the only move that they're probably going to be using is the 2 because it's 10 frames and they're plus 1 so they have the frame advantage against you. So if this happens, I would advise to dick jab them so that way you can beat them. There's very less of a likely choice that they're going to be going for moves like let's say their 3 because their 3 is 16 frames on startup. So you can actually hit them out of doing that move if they opt to go for that move. That's why a lot of harangues will go for two of these hits because they're seeing whether or not if you're going to go for the dig jab to catch you off guard. So if that were to happen and they are that knowledgeable of the overall weakness of this particular move, then you can though try to then attack again with a jab against them instead of going for a dig jab. So that is all. That's everything that I know of with Harang that you need to be wary of. These are the moves that a lot of players will love to use against Harang when they first pick him up. Of course, he has a lot of other things you have to worry about, like the fact that when he's in his right flamingo stance or his right stance, how to properly beat it. I didn't really mention much when it comes to left flamingo stance because left flamingo is more of a starting stance that allows him access to go into his right flamingo or to his right stance. So most players would rather not use left flamingo stance as it's not really a move that they want to go into. They want to go into right flamingo stance because that's where all of the frame traps are at, especially while they're in their right stance. That's where all the frame traps they can be using against you. They'll try to bombard you with all the bullshit that they can use against you and stop you from even attempting to stop them in place. Again, a lot of these moves can be stepped to the left if you recognize the moves that is. So again, I know that a lot of you won't really know how to do that yet. So that's why I recommend to either dick jab the harangue or to make a proper read and then go into initially another low attack or even try to interrupt the harangue with one of your standing jabs attacks if you want to. So that is all. I hope that this particular type of knowledge check punish type of video is helpful. I hope that that once you come across a harangue, you won't feel as threatened by them. Again, try to practice this in your training mode. Don't immediately go into an online match and hope that you can then perform these things and immediately know how to punish them accordingly. So, if you like the video, give the video a like, dislike if you want to, subscribe and see more of my shit, and yeah, stay tuned, stay safe.